Are you planning a trip to the beautiful island of Paros in Greece? In this video we'll be sharing a 7 day itinerary from our own trip to help you make the most of your time on this idyllic island. From sandy beaches with crystal clear waters to breathtaking hikes through charming villages, Paros has something for everyone. What's more, you can still explore the island and have a memorable trip even if you don't hire a car, so this itinerary is ideal for anyone who will be relying on public transport. Our first full day in Paros started by exploring Naosa, an extraordinarily pretty village nestled on the northern coast of the island that we used as our base for the first three days of our trip. Naosa is the perfect place to wander without a set plan. Once a sleepy fishing village, Naosa is now a cosmopolitan hub of portside cafes, swanky bars and boutique shops. There's even a winery at the edge of the village. The historical pedestrian only part is perfect for aimlessly exploring and getting lost. We moseyed around the quaint port where you can watch small boats bobbing back and forth and listen to the gentle lapping of the waves. From there you can wander out to the remains of a small Venetian castle. This 14th century fort was used to help protect Naosa from pirates. Just be warned you will have to walk along the wall to get there, so if the waves are rough you might get a little wet. While exploring Naosa, if you look up you'll see the third largest church on the island perched on top of a hill. Walk up to the church and stroll around the grounds and you'll get some stunning views. Just a short walk away lies the family run Marietis Winery and it's well worth a visit. We did a one hour guided tour of the winery which was really interesting. The winery is over a century old and has underground cellars and organic vineyards. We learned all about the history of the place and how they make their wine. And then, of course, came the best part, the tasting. We got to try three different wines, a white, a rosé and a red. Now, we're definitely not wine experts, but we really enjoyed all three, even the rosé, which is usually not our thing. If you do want to visit the winery, I'd recommend booking in advance. To do this, we just emailed them a few days before our trip. If you don't have time for the full tour, then they do have a wine bar in the centre of Naosa where you can still sample their wines, or you could just grab a bottle from the supermarket. Just as delicious. After the winery, we popped into a bakery to grab a spanakopita, which is a Greek savoury pie made of flaky phyllo pastry, spinach and usually feta. The rest of the afternoon was spent at one of Naosa's two village beaches. The Perry Beach is just a few minutes walk from the port and it's a bit of a mixed bag. It's a small unorganised beach that's sandy and a bit pebbly. When it's windy the waves can get pretty rough so keep that in mind if you like your waters a little calmer. It definitely wasn't the most beautiful beach that we visited on Paros but it still had that gorgeous crystal clear water and there were trees lined along the back of the sand for anyone in need of some shade. Plus it's really convenient if you don't want to go too far afield. Perfect for a quick dip after walking around the village. After watching a gorgeous sunset from our balcony, we headed back into the centre of the village. After the sun goes down, the picturesque port is bathed in the warm glow of the street lamps and the winding alleys are packed with restaurants, bars and cafes for you to choose from. For dinner, we headed to a popular waterfront restaurant called Taverna Glafkos. We had stuffed vine leaves, grilled octopus, and fish with sautéed vegetables. The food was delicious and they even surprised us with a complimentary slice of lemon cheesecake for dessert. A great way to end our first full day on Paros. After breakfast on our terrace, we took a boat from the ports to Kalimbathres Beach. Our plan for the day was to visit both the beach and Paros Park. We caught the first boat of the day from Naosa Harbour and enjoyed the 15 minute ride across the water. Kalimbathres Beach is one of the most well-known beaches on Paros and for good reason. The beach is characterised by its strange and smooth rock formations rising out from the sea. The whole area looks pretty otherworldly. There are some beds for hire here, although they are pretty pricey. As we weren't spending the whole day here, we left our stuff by a rock and spent a couple of hours wading in the turquoise shallow water looking for fish. The beach is dotted with a few small cafes, restaurants and a beach bar suitably playing rock music. It was a great spot to relax for the morning, although we could have happily stayed there all day. 
Once we were able to tear ourselves away from the water, we walked around 20 minutes to Monastery Beach and Paros Park. This route takes you a longer road with no pavement, so be careful. As you get closer, you'll pass a monastery perched on the rocky coast. This tranquil 17th century monastery is absolutely beautiful with its whitewashed walls, blue dome roofs and breathtaking panoramas of the sea. From here, drop down to Monastery Beach. You can rent lounges at the upscale beach, but like the previous beach, they were pretty pricey. We saw some that cost up to 60 euros for two people. The water here stays shallow for a really long way. This clip here is taken from Waste Heights. After enjoying a quick dip and a picnic on the rocks, we moved on to Paros Park. Paros Park covers 80 hectares of rocky cliffs, hidden coves and rugged walking trails. We hiked along one of the well-marked walking paths to get a view of the lonely lighthouse. The hike itself was relatively easy, but the terrain does consist of loose rocks and spiky plants, so watch your step. When you're ready to head back to Nyusa, you can catch one of the regular boats back to the village that departs from the vicinity of Manastiri Beach. That evening we went for what would be one of our favourite meals of the entire trip. At this restaurant you could order smaller plates that were basically like Greek tapas. The quality was fantastic and really great value for money too. Because it was so dark, the clips I took of the food really didn't work out, so I'll link their TripAdvisor page down below so you can check out photos and decide for yourself if you'd like to visit. You'll probably need to join a long queue to eat here, but it is totally worth it. The next day we took the pleasant 30 minute bus ride to Golden Beach on the southeastern side of the island. There are other beaches closer to Nausa, but after a friend told us how much they adored Golden Beach, we had to give it a try. Here you'll find a long stretch of soft, warm sand and bright clear water set to a stunning backdrop of rolling hills. Perfect for relaxing in a lounge chair and letting the tranquility wash over you. If you're feeling a little more active, you'll find plenty of water sports on offer, particularly windsurfing, which Golden Beach is renowned for. This peaceful coastal strip is lined with beach bars, so if you want to hire a lounger then take a walk up and down the beach first to decide which one appeals to you the most. We quickly settled on the beach project, drawn in by its rustic decor, healthy food options and comfy looking lounges. We paid 10 euros for the day for chairs on the second row, but that coveted first row cost more at 20 euros. Still a lot cheaper than the lounges we'd seen on the previous day. There were people coming out to your lounges throughout the day, or you could go to the bar yourself if you prefer self-service. To give you an idea of prices at the beach project, we paid 4 euros for a cold Greek lager, 9 euros for a Greek salad, and 16 euros for sea bass ceviche. Not bad for nutritious, good quality food. They did play music at this beach bar, which some people will love, some people won't. I fall into the category of people who are happy either way, as long as the music isn't overbearing. We found the music playing to be pretty low key, and while you could hear it on the beach, it certainly wasn't loud. Again, whether this is a good thing or a bad thing will be entirely down to your personal preference. After a relaxing beach day, we caught the bus back to Nausa from the same place we were dropped off. While we thought the beach was absolutely worth the bus journey, if you're looking for an option closer to Nausa, then Santa Maria is a firm visitor favourite. That night we went out for pork gyros. For anyone unfamiliar, this is roasted meat cooked on a spit and then served in a pitta with tomato, onion, lettuce, tzatziki and fries. This popular Greek street food is a good option if you're after something quick and cheap that's also filling and mouth-wateringly delicious. After a slow morning drinking coffee on our balcony and admiring the gorgeous shimmering Aegean Sea, we checked out of our lovely studio and caught the bus to Perikia, where we would spend the next four nights of our trip. It's worth mentioning at this point that you really don't need to split your stay like we did, and that either Nausa or Perikia would be a good home base if you're relying on public transport. However, we really couldn't decide between the two, and for a seven day trip we felt as though splitting our base worked quite well, but for a trip shorter than one week I would recommend picking just one location. After dropping off our luggage, we set out to explore Perikia. 
Perikia is the main port town in Paros and, like so many charming villages on this island, is known for its maze of winding streets lined with traditional whitewashed buildings and colourful flowers. There are several interesting sites in Perikia, with one of the most well-known being the Church of 100 Doors, which doesn't actually have 100 doors. This stone church is considered to be one of the oldest and most important Greek Orthodox churches in Greece and is an important site of pilgrimage. Other notable sites in Perikia include the small Frankish castle which was built by the Venetians in the 1200s, the chapel of St Constantine with its blue domed roof and spectacular vantage point, and the ancient cemetery which admittedly is too small to warrant a detour but hey, walking along the harbour is so pleasant that why not? If you're ready to take a break from sightseeing and enjoy a hearty lunch then we liked Lemony. This simple restaurant offers a small selection of filling dishes that can either be taken away or enjoyed on their outdoor benches. Our moussaka and chicken with rice and spinach may have been an odd choice for us on a hot day, but they were flavourful and satisfying and at 5 euros a dish they were outstanding value too. As it was getting closer to sunset we went to Bebop for cocktails with a view. This modern rooftop bar serves high quality cocktails with the perfect view of the warm sun setting over the sea. It's understandably a really popular spot, so while we found we easily got a table without a reservation, we did arrive at least 30 minutes before sunset and it wasn't long until the bar was full. The cocktails are a little pricey as expected given the quality and the location, so if you don't want to go to the bar you could still just grab a spot along the coast or in front of the Chapel of St Constantine and you'll still experience the amazing sunset view for free. Around 5 kilometres south of Perikia lies the Valley of the Butterflies. Well, these butterflies aren't actually butterflies, but are Jersey tiger moths. A plethora of these striking black and cream insects with red underwings migrate to the valley each summer. For three euros you can follow shady trails through a serene oasis and observe these moths in their unique natural habitat. The area is only small, but it's very tranquil. Visitors are asked to be very quiet so as to not disturb the resident insects. As you walk along the winding trails, the only sounds you'll hear are the gentle footsteps of other visitors, the soothing trickle of the nearby stream, and the cheerful chirping of cicadas. The Jersey Tiger moths start to arrive at the end of May and stay until September. Our mid-September trip was towards the end of the season, so while we did see a lot, if you visit in the height of summer you should see a much larger swarm. As the population was lower, the entrance fee was reduced to 2 euros. After exploring the trail, stop in their lovely little cafe where you can enjoy snacks, juice or apparently very strong coffee under a canopy of trees. <laughs> to get to the Valley of the Butterflies, we caught the number 3 bus from the bus station which terminates at Aliki. Check the bus timetable for one that's not going via Butakos. You then walk around 20 minutes up a hill towards the reserve. It's well signposted and very easy to find. As we had a big walk planned for the next day, we used saving our feet as an excuse to spend the afternoon at the beach. We headed via an obligatory Greek salad to the beach located at the edge of the town. Like Nose, so the most convenient beach in Perikia is not the best you'll find and is understandably very busy. But it still has those clear waters and is a good spot to throw down a towel for a couple of hours. The next day we went on a hike which would turn out to be our favourite activity on the island. This route consists of five idyllic villages, the rolling Greek countryside, a small relaxing beach and the oldest road on Paros. The walk we did was around 7 kilometres, but if you would like to do something shorter then left Kester Prodromos via the Byzantine Trail alone is a very popular option. In the morning we caught the bus inland to Lefkes which is the highest village on Paros. This traditional Cycladic village is surrounded by olive groves, pine trees and rugged hills. This was the capital of Paros during the Middle Ages, with its protected position meaning it was a good place to avoid the relentless pirate attacks. 
stroll the narrow streets and admire the Grand Aegea Triada Church, built by local craftsmen using the esteemed marble of Paros. After that, relax with a coffee at one of the little cafes. <laughs> Just wait. No. <laughs> <laughs> From Levket, you can hike three and a half kilometers along the Byzantine Road. This renowned marble paved path is the oldest road on Paros and connects Levket with the equally beautiful village of Prodromos. The trail begins with one steep ascent, then the rest of the path mostly consists of flat or downhill terrain as you journey through the picturesque countryside, taking in breathtaking views of the hills, villages and even the sea, all the way off in the distance. Prodromos was a little less busy than Lefkes and just as breathtaking, with the same whitewashed houses dotted with pretty pink bougainvillea. Here we stop for lunch at a lovely little cafe before continuing on to the next two villages, Marmara and Marpisa. Not many walkers must have continued this far as we felt as though we had these villages almost to ourselves. Apart from the cats, of course. Hello. If you enjoy walking and want to escape the crowds, then I would definitely recommend that you keep going and explore these beautiful villages. From here, the final stretch of the hike takes you down to Piso Levadi, where you'll be rewarded with a charming little harbour and a small but clean and sheltered beach. There's a handful of cafes and restaurants overlooking the water if you're ready to eat, or you could just relax on the beach before catching the bus back to Perikia. Today was our last day on Paros before we would be catching the ferry to Santorini. After a full day of walking yesterday, we decided to squeeze in one more beach trip. Krios Beach is a small bay just three kilometers from Perikia and shares the same beach line with the also popular Marcello Beach. With its tranquil waters and powdery sand, Krios Beach is the ideal spot for swimming and relaxation while enjoying views of the passing ferries. We spent our day at Pedro's where we paid 15 euros for a comfy pair of sunbeds and an umbrella for the day. They also serve food and drink if you don't bring your own. While it's not quite as convenient as the beach we visited on day 5, Krios Beach is still easy to get to and we found the sand softer than the beaches closer to the port. To get to Krios Beach, one option is to take a boat from the port in Perikia, or you can walk along an enjoyable trail from Lavadia Beach. Just follow the coastline for around 20 minutes before dropping down to Krios Beach. We wrapped up our day with one last stunning Parikia sunset before heading over to Boontaraki for dinner. This cosy restaurant was another where we had to wait in line to get a table, but again the queue was totally worth it. The food was amazing, authentic Greek fare and the staff were super welcoming. It all came at a great price too. It was the perfect way to end our week on the enchanting island of Paros. I'll be sharing a video packed with practical information and tips for visiting Paros, so as soon as that's ready I'll link it here. We will also have a short video on how to spend one day hiking on Santorini, so keep an eye out for that if you're doing a bit of island hopping while you're in the Cyclades. Thanks for watching and have a great trip to Paros!